All right, I've been seeing these skin tone color filters circulating on TikTok for long enough. Time to find out if I'm in autumn or winter. All right, what you got, TikTok? Summer? Yeah. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Fall? Yeah, a little, a little dark. A little too dark. Spring? Hmm, not too bad. Winter? Oh, a little spicy action there. Theorist? Wait, the theorist? That's, that's not a season. Don't- No, I know I'm a theorist! Don't stop on that one! I have learned nothing through this! Hello, Internet! Welcome to Style Theory, the show that never grew out of its blue eyeshadow phase. Now, I don't know if you've noticed this, but I've been on a personal style journey over the last few years, all culminating in this, launching my own style channel. And it has, in fact, been a journey, starting with those questionable, oversized childhood duds, then to wearing green suits throughout college, to professional wear as an adult, and now finally finding my cool, signature youtube look. Let me tell you, I have stretched the definition of the word style to its limits. Listen, it's just all all trial and error until you finally find out the thing that works for you. Or is it? There may actually be a way that science can help us out. You see, there have been filters and analyses made to help you understand your body type. That way you can figure out clothes that flatter your figure. You can find what haircut fits your face shape best. Even what makeup is gonna look the best on you. And lately, the hottest trend have been the TikTok filters teaching you what color season you are. That way you have an easy guide to what colors you should be wearing and which ones you should be avoiding at all costs. Science and technology work together to try and help us solve the fashion conundrums that have haunted us for decades. But does any of it actually work? Can science actually help you get dressed and look better doing it? That, my friends, is what we're aiming to start putting to the test today. This is the first of a series of what I've been thinking of as style theory basics, where we're going to be going over the foundation of fashion and beauty rules and then putting them through the old theorist ringer to see if they actually work. Is there some truth to all these old wives tales, or is it just a bunch of beauty bunk? The hope is that by the end of the series, we have ourselves the perfect guide to getting dressed and looking nice. And so today, we're focusing on the very first step, color. Specifically, the science behind color matching. Not only has this phenomenon of Wheel of Fortune looking filters been clogging up my TikTok feed over the past month, but her friend Sophia actually did a video getting professionally color matched. So this idea has been cemented in my brain, and now I need answers. I'd never really considered whether or not what I was wearing was the right color for me or not. I mean, what if my signature red jacket is the wrong shade of red for me, and I've been walking around looking like a straight-up clown for years. That would be so embarrassing. And as my wheel of colored jackets has continued to expand, I need to know which ones are the right ones for me. So today, I want to break down what the science behind color matching actually is to see if there's any truth to this idea, or if we're all just being too distracted by the pretty spinning colors to see the truth behind the curtain, or a uh, truth behind the flags, in this case. These fancy fabric swatches that they use during professional color matching sessions, yeah, those are called flags. And that's only the start of the rabbit hole we're about to go down through. From finding your skin tone to understanding how to read the map of your face to get to the buried treasure of becoming the style icon of your dreams, I hope that you're ready to dress with all the colors of the wind. Or maybe not all the colors of the wind, this episode's all about dialing in the specific colors that match your color type, so maybe a bit of an over-exaggeration there. Color matching, the process of finding what color category goes best with your skin, isn't a new thing. Though recently it's come back into fashion, so to speak, with the rise of filters and ASMR videos. The origins of color matching actually date all the way back to Sir Isaac Newton and the color wheel, who broke down what we could see into an easy-to-look-at model showcasing the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, the three secondary colors, green, orange, and purple, and then the six leftovers known as the tertiary colors, which are all made up by mixing primary and secondary colors together. Now, if I draw a line right down the middle here, you can see that the wheel can be divided into warm tones, the ones on the left, and cool tones, the ones on the right. And over time, the color wheels evolved and expanded to include other planes of color to help illustrate a color's saturation and brightness. The first recording recorded instance of this color theory being applied to actual people and what they're wearing, though, was in Godey's Ladies Book, one of the first women's fashion magazines in an article from 1855 titled Choice of Colors in Dress, or How a Lady May Become Good Looking. This article detailed a method for testing colors against your skin tone that's very much like what you see professional color matching do today. That being said, it also contains some very strong opinions about colors, like the fact that the color red is, quote, rarely suitable in any close neighborhood to a lady's skin, or that Orange is apparently a no-no color for anyone because, I quote, it is ugly. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel there, Goaty. Then, in the 1970s and 1980s, the idea of personal color matching became all the rage, with books like Color Me a Season, Color Me Beautiful, and Color the Essence of You, all looking to capitalize on the new availability of affordable, fast printing that made it easy to get full-color images in the hands of consumers. Humans using technology to validate our own self-worth since the beginning. Anyway, the majority of these books all employed some some very 
variation of the seasonal system of classification that we're now seeing trending across TikTok. These sort people into four categories, winter, spring, summer, and autumn. The definition of what fits into each category kind of changed depending on which version you're using, with many catering specifically to white skin tones, which is not a good look in my book. So instead, we're going to try to focus on a modern day classification to keep this discussion as open and inclusive as possible. Depending on which system you're going to be looking at, these typical four seasons then get broken down into three basic categories to help you sort yourself into the correct season. The overall skin tone, then contrast, which can also be called value, and saturation, aka chroma. So now that we've laid ourselves some groundwork, how do we find out where we fit into these categories? Glad you asked, theorists, because it's time for the fun part of today's episode, the testing. First up, we've got ourselves skin tone. And notice that I say skin tone and not skin type. People often get these two things confused. So if you want to find out what skin type you are, I actually made a short about that not too long ago. Link is probably in the top right of the screen, though, you know, with shorts, they're constantly changing stuff all the time. So I'm assuming I can put it up there. But if not, it's just on the channel page. While you're over there, you should probably hit the subscribe button. That way you can become the beauty god or goddess of your dreams. But with that call out made, back to the matter at hand, skin tone. Now, skin tone actually refers to the two different tones that make up your skin coloring, your overtone and your undertone. Your overtone is the dominant surface tone of your skin, the one you notice when you look in the mirror. Your undertone, however, is the color that hides under the surface. And this is actually the main tone of color that analysts and TikTok filters are looking to dial in when they're sorting into seasons to try and help find the best colors to incorporate into your wardrobe. Now, it's also important to note here that your undertone is not determined by your overtone. Two people with the same overtone can have completely different undertones, even if you're siblings that share the same DNA pool. It all depends on the pigments that are present in your skin. That's right, I said the buzzword, pigment. Every makeup reviewer's favorite. Pretty pigment. Pigmented. Pigmented. Pigmentation. Your overall skin tone usually falls into one of three categories, warm, cold, and neutral. Warm means that you have more golden, peach, and yellow undertones present in your skin. A cold undertone, on the other hand, has more blue, red, and pink. And neutral is, eh, you could probably guess, smack dab in the middle, living its best Hannah Montana life. <laughs> And while there's certainly a number of things that can factor into what your skin tone is, like genes and sun exposure, you can actually break it down into three main contributors, melanin, carotene, and hemoglobin. Let's just start with the one that you probably heard about before, melanin. Melanin is a pigment produced by cells called melanocytes that are found in the top layer of your skin, the epidermis, though they can be found in other parts of the body as well. Your body produces melanin to protect your skin from UV radiation, and this is why if you hang around basking in the sun for long periods of time, your skin starts to change in tone. When exposed to the sun for a significant length of time, your skin starts producing more melanin to help protect you. And if you happen to be someone who burns more easily, then your body is likely not producing enough melanin to protect the surface layer of your skin. In the human body, we actually have ourselves five different types of melanin, but there are only two that you need to know for our purposes today. There is eumelanin, which comes in either a brown or black type, and pheomelanin, which comes in a range from yellow to red. The amount of these two types of melanin pigments determine not just your skin tone, but also your eyes and hair color as well. Yep, it's all connected, and it's all unique to you. But what about the two other factors? that I mentioned. While they certainly play smaller roles, carotene and hemoglobin are key ingredients to making your skin tone unique. You might already be familiar with carotene when it comes to plants. This is what gives carrots their bright orange color. When we eat more food with carotene, our body is going to store that in our fat cells, where it then gives our skin a more yellowish tone. Though too much can certainly take it further. Ever see that episode of Magic School Bus where Arnold turns orange because he was eating too many orange seaweed snacks? Well, that's actually a real condition called carotenosis, where the body's absorbed and stored so much carotene in your fat cells that it actually tints the skin an unnatural color of orange. Just no one tell Goaty about this. I hear they think the color orange is ugly. And then there's the final factor, hemoglobin. No, not hobgoblin. I'm talking about the stuff that's floating around in your blood, not the guy that's floating around trying to attack Spider-Man. Now, don't get too excited, all you vampire facial aficionados. Uh, don't look that one up, by the way. Maybe an episode for another day. But how healthy your blood is can radically change your skin. You see, hemoglobin's a protein that carries the oxygen around in your veins via your red blood cells. If you're lacking in oxygenated blood, your skin can appear paler, grayer, or even in extreme cases, bluer. If you have redder skin, it means that there's more oxygen-rich hemoglobin flowing through the dermis, or middle layer of your skin, thereby making you look all rosy like a Mr. Tomatoes. Now, there's a few ways that you can actually test your skin to find its true tone, and no, it's not the TikTok filters. The first is the vein test. For this, you would actually look at the veins on your inner wrist under natural light to see what color they are. If they're blue, well, you're gonna be cool-toned. If they look green, then you're warm-toned. If it seems to be a mixture of both, or not 
clearly one or the other, then likely you're a neutral. That said, this test comes with one big issue. Not everyone can see their veins on their wrists for any number of reasons. But I've never been able to figure it out on my veins. Same, Sophia. Same. So we move on to test number two, the jewelry test, where you hold up a piece of silver and a piece of gold jewelry to your skin to see which is going to be more complimentary. If you look better in the gold, then you have yourself a warmer skin tone. Silver, you're getting yourself cooler tones, and if you look equally gorgeous in both, well then you're a neutral. But if you don't have either of those handy, here's your final test, the paper test. You just hold up a piece of white paper to your face. If your skin looks more yellow, you're warm toned. If it looks pink, you're cool toned. And if it looks gray or green, then you're neutral. If you've ever had to color balance a camera, it's basically a similar process. All we're doing here is just white balancing our face. After trying out all three tests on myself, I found that I am warm toned. So while everyone in the room runs off and finds themselves pieces of paper and jewelry, just gonna stall for time here for a second by asking you to hit that subscribe button. That way you never miss any of our style theory basics episodes, where we're gonna be breaking down the basics to help you on your fashion and beauty journey. I'm telling you, I've got a lot more of these sorts of episodes planned. It's one of the reasons I'm really excited about this channel. I'm learning this stuff alongside you, and it's gonna be fun for all of us. Anyway, thank you all for subscribing. Let's move on to the next round of tests. So now, if those tests work, you should have yourself an idea of if you're warm, cool, or neutral. But if you were paying attention at the beginning of the episode, you'll remember that this is actually only the first category that we have to sort ourselves into to find our true color season. There are two other categories that we still have to cover, and this is where all those TikTok filters really start to break down. They're not built to dive deeper than, oh, Matt Pat's pasty and kind of yellow in this lighting according to the color balance on this phone, so we're just gonna classify him as a summer. So in terms of science, that's a big point for professionals and a big old zero for the TikTok filters. Now, you ready for a sorting speed round? Let's go. Category two is contrast, also referred to as value by color matching professionals. In this category, you're either light or dark, aka low contrast or high contrast. This is gonna determine whether you look better in lighter colors like pastels or darker colors like deep navy blues and maroons. Pastels are lower in color value, so people who are high contrast tend to look washed out. If you fall somewhere in the middle, well, you can likely pull off both. The best test to figure out this one is by taking a photo of yourself and then running it through a filter or Photoshop to turn it into grayscale. Just make that thing black and white. This is going to help you see if your features all blend together or if there are standout features like your eyes, your eyebrows, and your hair. Take a look at this full color version of my photo versus the grayscale. As you can tell, my eyes, eyebrows, and hair all have high contrast relative to my skin. This thereby makes me a high contrast person and better suited for darker, higher contrast clothing. The same rule applies to people with deeper skin tones than me as well. As explained by the concept wardrobe.com, quote, similarly, if all your features are very dark with very little difference in value between your hair, eyes, and skin, the contrast between your features is also deemed high because the dark features contrast with the whites of the eyes and the teeth. On the other end, if all your features hit a similar tone, then you are low contrast and are better suited for lighter colors. Think Taylor Swift in her lover era. Lastly, there's the saturation category, aka chroma, where you're either a bright or a muted. Bright or high chroma colors are more saturated. Muted or low chroma colors are less vibrant and have a higher value of gray pigment. People who look better in bright colors tend to look washed out wearing all neutral tones. It makes their skin appear more sickly and dull, whereas someone who falls into the muted category can wear neutrals with no problem. On the other side, muted people tend to be swallowed up by outfits that are too colorful. So let's just try this one for ourselves. Here's two pictures of me in my classic red jacket. Now on the right, let's up the saturation to make it brighter. On the left, let's bring it down to a more muted, grayer red tone. See how the brighter red actually looks better on me? That means that I fall into the bright category. Jeez, the Myers-Briggs personality test has got nothing on color analysis testing. We've literally analyzed ourselves down to the microscopic level for this thing. I feel so perceived. Now that we've had ourselves a crash course on the three categories that factor into color matching, skin tone, contrast, and saturation, it's finally time to put all that information together to find our color season. If you have a warm skin tone, you fall into either spring or autumn. To find out which, we look at contrast and saturation. Light and bright makes you a spring, dark and muted means you're an autumn. On the other hand, if you have a cool tone, you're either summer or winter. Cool tones who are light and muted are a summer, while those that are dark and bright are winters. And if I didn't call on you, don't worry, that's not because you failed the test or did things wrong. It actually means that you don't perfectly sort into any of these categories. You actually fall between seasons. Depending on which color analysis guide you use, there are a few different ways to categorize people who don't fit into a true season. But the simplest explanation is this. Light muted warm tones are autumn summers. Dark bright warm tones are spring autumns. For all the cool kids out there, light bright cool tones are winter springs. And dark muted cool tones are winter summers. Uh, if I'm going through this too quickly, just feel free to screenshot stuff. In these cases, one season tends to be the dominant season, depending on the person. And I didn't forget you, my neutral tone theorists. You are lucky enough to look good in pretty much most colors, which means that you're able to float between seasons more freely. 
with your contrast and saturation results helping to rule out any outliers. For me, after running all the tests, it actually turns out that I'm one of these outlier cases. I am dark, bright, and warm, thereby making me a spring slash autumn. And when you actually stop and look at the stuff that I like to wear, these brightly colored jackets, these high contrast shirts, all these items that are vibrant and loud, they actually match the exact color palette that I'm supposed to look best in. Without realizing it, I was actually dressing for my true season. I guess I just kind of lucked my way into it. So now that we found ourselves the perfect definitive color palette for each skin tone, we can go forth into the world knowing the hard facts about what colors we should be wearing and which ones we should be avoiding at all costs. But now that we've done all that, I'm not actually satisfied with the answers. There are so many variables here that this science feels incomplete to me. All of this color theory feels just like that. A theory! And while I certainly love myself a good theory, you know that I love myself some sweet, juicy data more. And boy howdy does this thing feel like it's lacking the numbers to back any of this up. Forgive me for not inherently trusting a system that's been around since Godi was shaming the color orange. So theorists, I'm gonna need your help today to prove or disprove the entire color matching game once and for all using a survey. That's right my friends, it's time again where we use our collective hive mind for the greater good. It's a super simple survey where all you gotta do is go through a list of pictures and choose either this or that. Which one looks better? So head on down to the description and click the link to take our color matching survey. I even left that link right there on the top line for you cause, you know, I like you so much. I'm only gonna be keeping the survey open for a couple days so make sure you do it ASAP if you want to be counted. And then meet me back here in a few weeks to see whether all this color analysis can actually hold up to the cold hard judgment of you guys. Actually, don't just meet me back here in a few weeks cause there's gonna be a whole new episode next week and it's gonna be a banger. I promise you that. We are constantly working to make sure that you have awesome stuff to watch. Educational and fun, welcome to Theorist. But as always remember, they're all just theories. STYLE THEORIES! Keep looking sharp. Did you click to go take that survey yet? Do that now! There is nothing else here. And while you're taking it, why not watch our last survey episode where you helped us to learn whether or not the math of facial symmetry actually makes you look more attractive. And with all that being said, I'll see you next week.